Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to part five of my red E36 sedan build. I'm Mike Van Schellenbeck, if you're new to the channel. And here's the car right behind me. If you remember from part four of the series last time, I was trying to get the fuel pump working and get the car running essentially. And I wasn't able to get fuel flow out of the um, feed line up to the rail. So we tested the fuel pump, it works when manually triggered but I wasn't able to get any fuel flow out of this hose up here. I'll show you right now. All right, I've got a little makeshift support here just in case the wind grabs the hood because these hood shocks are weak and I need to replace them. Anyways, last time I pulled off the fuel feed line uh, from the back of the car and I noticed that even when triggering the fuel pump on, I wasn't able to get any fuel flow right here. So that means there's some kind of obstruction between this point and the pump back there. And the only piece in line, besides just hard line and rubber fuel hose, is the fuel filter. So I have a new fuel filter, and that's what we're gonna install next. All right, so I got a new Bosch inline filter. It's just a little canister one. Uh, arrow is the direction of flow. So tank side, engine side. And I'm pretty sure on these OBD1, this is a 93, 325i. I'm pretty sure that they're about here on the driver's side frame rail underneath that way. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and jack it up and verify that, put the car on jack stands for safety, and then we'll take a look. All right, guys, well, unfortunately we didn't quite luck out because there is a version of E36s where, maybe it's OBD2, that the uh, fuel filter goes right here along the hard lines. And unfortunately this one is, let's see up there so uh just on the driver's side of the oil pan right by the steering shaft gonna kind of be a pain to get to i might consider taking off the intake manifold for this let's look from the top all right so yeah sure enough the filter is right down here it's so bright out here i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it let's see if you get down here nope Let's see if I can get some light down in here to show you guys. Got a flashlight now. So there is the fuel filter. I'm shining on it right now. Uh, but basically it's right down there by the starter. Not a very easy spot to get to, but it does look like it'll be easier from the top side. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the, come on, focus. Look at this, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this boot back off, probably pull the throttle body off just so I can get back in there. And then there's like a clamp that goes around the fuel filter. Um, so I'll probably have to loosen that or remove it, remove the two fuel lines, and then we'll throw this new one in. So I'll get to it. All right, so I went ahead and put the car back down on the ground. No point in having it up when we're working from the top. Um, so basically I removed the intake, removed the throttle body. It's still hooked up by the throttle body coolant lines, which I haven't looped or deleted or anything yet. So I'm gonna just try to leave it here chilling and kind of hold it to the side. And then basically there's some fuel hard lines that are under the intake manifold. They just run basically over here and then it converts back to soft line to go into the rail there. So there's a short section of line from this hard line down to the top of the fuel filter. I don't know if you can see it down there right now. It's right behind this stuff. Um, and I'm gonna try to get all this off without removing too much more, but it's gonna be pretty tight in there, so report back. All right, guys, this is uh, quite a pain in the ass. I, hopefully you don't have to do this as well, but it needs to be done. So the bracket that the filter is in is in like a little sleeve down here, and it has a 10 millimeter with a nut on the back of it that's actually, well, the nut's built in, so you don't have to have a wrench. But basically, it clamps around the filter, holds it into this bracket, and I wasn't able to get to everything without basically removing the bracket. So there's two 13 millimeter bolts that go on the block, uh, pull the bracket off, and then loosen that 10. And you can't really see it, but I got the top line off, jacked the car back up so I could get to the bottom line more easily. So, there it is right there. Just gotta remove that clamp and then I can slide it out the bottom here and put the new one in. 
Ta-da! Success! I don't know if this is the original or not, but it looks pretty German to me. Auslauf. Out. Cool. Well, I finally got that out. As you can see, I'm filthy, so this is not a uh, clean job by any means. But I was able to get it, get the bottom hose off from underneath the car, slide it out the bottom. Now I'm gonna slide the new one in. And I'm probably also gonna replace the fuel lines that go from the hard line to the filter because they look, they're pretty old. And I just realized, you know, I'm removing these bolts thinking, removing these bolts thinking it's kind of like a, a new car. You know, to me, E36s aren't that old, but this car is literally 27 years old. These bolts have probably never been removed. So no wonder they're a little bit difficult, you know, it makes sense. Um, so let's put the new filter in now and keep jamming. All right, so it turns out I did have some spare uh, fuel hose. It's just random 5 sixteenths of an inch um, fuel, fuel injection hose. So it's rated to 3.4 bar or whatever. That's plenty um, or close-ish. It's fine. So you'll notice on fuel lines, if you're not aware, let's see where it says it. It says J30R7. That's basically a rating of the rubber and the number after the R determines how high a quality the fuel hose is. So like Gates Barricade Hose, which is fully E85 compatible and submersible, is gonna be an R14 hose. Um, I think anything R10 and above is okay for E85. And if it's R4, it has to be R14 to be submersible, like completely soaked in E85 for your fuel pump in tank. Um, but since I'm gonna go pump gas for a while and I'm not really, I'm trying to keep this budget oriented and not, you know, control myself and not go too crazy. So I'm just going with some random cheapo stuff I already had, R7. If I do go E85 later, which I'm sure I will, uh, I'll probably end up redoing these lines in stainless or Teflon or something else and changing the fuel filter setup. So for now, I've already got this, it's cheap, let's get going. All right, I went ahead and installed the outlet line, the upper line on the, the canister. So now I'm gonna slide it up into the sleeve and that should be a little bit easier to reinstall that way. Let's do it. Alrighty, I've got the filter slid up in there. Now I'm gonna replace these lines. These are the ones that go from the hard line under the car up to the filter and to the other section of uh, metal line underneath the intake manifold so they're just short sleeved lines here and they're all old rubber so while i'm in there kind of thing i'm gonna go ahead and replace them let's do it Alrighty, got that section of hoses out it actually isn't terrible looking like i can bend it and it's not just cracking right up but it's one of those things where i've got brand new fuel line it's really cheap might as well cut some more to length and put it on and to reiterate, that goes from these metal connections down to the fuel filter and then to the metal lines under the car. So just a short section of rubber from like here to here. That's it. Okay, well, I've got it almost all back together. New lines are on, got some decent clamps on there. Um, the brackets back on, which was a huge pain in the ass, getting those 13s back onto the block. Man, that was not fun. So the filters down there, lines clipped back into that little holder to get it away from the steering shaft. Right now I just have to hook up the uh, connection from the bottom of the fuel filter to the hard line, put two clamps on that. And then I'm gonna put all this stuff back on and we will test the fuel system, see if we can get fuel coming out of the feed right there. Let's do it. Also, this is cool, so. If, you, if your entire body is like filthy and you wipe yourself, it kind of just makes the rest of you also filthy. Pro tip. All right guys, unfortunately I have a little bit of bad news, uh, nothing serious or anything, but I installed the new fuel filter and even when jumpering the pump relay and making sure the fuel pump was running and listening to it and everything, um, I still can't get any fuel up at the rail. So obviously the car's not starting. I cranked it and uh, have it on a battery charger because it was super dead from sitting for a while. Um, but basically I just unplugged the, the feed line at the front of the rail and then put the jumper in the, the relay socket to bridge from pin 30 to pin 87, which is battery power, 
to relay output, 87's relay output, um, that's convention for relays. And uh, when I put that in, I could hear the, the pump running, but you know, there's nothing coming out of the fuel line up front. Um, so we have some other obstruction somewhere, which is really weird, but there's some kind of obstruction between the bulkhead where the pump is mounted and the fuel filter. So I, I'm gonna have to look into that. I don't really know what to think because there shouldn't be a check valve or anything. It should just be completely hard line all the way up. So um, to be continued tomorrow morning, I was really hoping to have it just purring like a kitten tonight and you know all ready and get, get amped about it. But um, I, I'm just gonna have to continue tomorrow. So the next video would be further diagnosis. I was hoping this would just be it running and the next video I could talk about turbo kit choices and why I chose certain components over others, stuff like that. Um, but next video is actually gonna be still more diagnosis of just trying to get this thing running. So um, maybe I'll talk a little bit about the turbo choices. I actually did buy a bunch of components from my buddy, Jason Scott. Uh, he had it set up on his M3 that I basically bought off him, uh, his old setup. So uh, we'll talk about that next time. Thanks so much for watching and uh, sorry, it was a little anticlimactic, but uh, we're almost there. I know it. I can, I can hear it in my mind. I can hear it. See ya.